Welcome to the Learning Lab. My name is Roman Garcia. What we're going to do today is we're going to review some of our um, uh, videos that we've done in the past and, and merge it in with uh, new talking points. Now, today's discussion is going to be about, the, um, about how technology has penetrated the musculoskeletal or the orthopedic domain in medicine. Now, what I find fascinating about this is that uh, newer, more expensive, more technologically advanced machines are being introduced into the marketplace in order to deal with these high rates of musculoskeletal um, conditions that patients seem to be incurring uh, based on their, their physical activity. Now, the holy grail of musculoskeletal or orthopedic medicine is to somehow be able to detect arthritic changes before they, they um, express themselves outright in the joint. And the idea is obviously if you can detect a medical condition before it gets serious, you may be able to do something about it. Now, the problem that I have with that is that I find it fascinating how these uh, technologies that are being introduced are being introduced while there is a, an extreme large gap between uh, clinicians' uh, skill sets in, the, um, by, in their skill sets to develop techniques or physical examination protocols to detect arthritis versus these new systems that are being introduced into the market of which their sensitivity or their accuracy is questionable. Now the other day I, I was looking through a, a medical journal and I saw this particular machine. It is a machine using new technology. It is from Europe and it's supposedly it's able to detect early the arthritis before it can even be picked up by any kind of current medical technological devices. Now this is the system, this is the article, it's a very small article. Now, I don't, Carlos, if you can zoom in, the, the article is very small. It just says, uh, earlier arthritis detection seen. This, is, this device was developed by a consortium in Europe and it uses a combination of light and ultrasound um, in order to detect very early um, arthritic changes in the joints. And by doing that, obviously, you can implement a medical protocol so the arthritis doesn't get worse and hopefully save money in the future. Now, this is a picture of the device. It looks very complex. It looks extremely complex, if you allow me. Let me just pull it up and you can see it. I'm not even sure how you can fit a joint into this device, but this is it. It's a finger scanner. And you run it over the joint, you run it over the joint, and it gives a readout, I assume. And based on that readout, it will tell the doctor or the medical practitioner whether that joint has early arthritis or not. Now, the problem I have with it is this, is that any kind or any kind of diagnostic test is limited by the same things humans are limited by. They have a way of acquiring sensory information from their environment. For example, an x-ray is able to see through bones and people. That's the value of x-ray and that's why you can use it to diagnose conditions because you can see the individual's bones. Now that's all the x-ray does. It doesn't have the ability to sense any other type of sensory information. Now, the problem I have with all these diagnostic tests when it's used to detect arthritic changes is this, is that assume that this is the world right here. This is the world. Now, the world has many dimensions. Depending on your sensory capabilities is how you're going to feel, experience, and see the world. Let's say that this quadrant right here is humans. These are the humans. We see the world through our eyes, we hear, we can feel, etc. X-ray is over here. An X-ray throws an energy beam. Can see right through the people, you can see bones. The MRI. Agitates a the um, it agitates a molecule in the body. It's a water that it agitates. 
when it agitates it and then rests that molecule, that molecule releases an energy, the MRI picks it up, puts it through a computer software program, which reconstitutes it into an image. And this is the MRI right over here. This machine over here, let's just call it the scanner, uses ultrasound and uses light energy it's very similar to MRI. It, it creates a, a, an excitation in the molecules of the supposedly degenerative tissue, and then the degenerative tissue sends out a signal which a machine picks up. Now, the problem is, is that humans, x-rays, MRIs, and this machine right over here, we are limited by our sensory capabilities. These, these technologies here, and I'll put humans as one of the technologies, we are limited by our limited sensory capacity. So we see the world only according to our sensory capabilities. If we just go by just one, one of these systems, read out, we are looking at the condition in only in, in one dimension. The only way that you can actually get a multi-dimensional view of a joint is if you are able to detect patterns in the biomechanics of the joint itself. And though I've never said this explicitly, that's basically what we, we've been doing since our first video. I've basically just been publishing patterns that are observed in the clinic and followed over years. And these patterns lead to, lead to a conclusion. Now, the joint itself has a way of communicating its condition to the observer if the observer is able to detect these patterns. Now, the problem with detecting early degenerative condition in joints is that you need a very sensitive system that's able to be um, sensitive to multiple energies emanating from the tissue itself. And none of these by themselves is able to do it. The only way that you can do it is by detecting these patterns. Because when arthritis starts to set into a joint, basically what's happening, and I think we've touched on this before, is that the tissue becomes disorganized. So a, a, let's say a normal tissue has very symmetrical planes and patterns in them, allowing smooth motion, a degenerative condition, will have this type of pattern. It would be very disorganized. And the, this disorganization, disorganization starts very early in the degenerative process. And none of these, none of these sensory systems by themselves can pick out this disorganized mass because disorganized mass exists in a, in, a, in a molecular state that does not allow for one particular system which only interprets one dimension of the world can pick out, will be able to pick out this disorganized state. The only way that you can pick out this disorganized state is by understanding the normal arthrokinematics of the joint. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to give you a way for you yourself to decipher, to, to interpret your own joints yourselves. So you can be, you can create a, a protocol where you can increase the sensitivity of knowing when arthritis is setting in. It's a very sensitive test and it's basically based on patterns, patterns that have been detected over the years with individuals that I've been able to examine. And we've been through this before. So today, like I said earlier, is partly review and partly a, a discussion on how you cannot depend on just one particular diagnostic test to give you a very sensitive inclination on whether you have the beginning of arthritis or not. The only way that you can tell is biomechanically because biomechanically is the only true sensitive manner in which the body tells the observer that there is something wrong in this joint. And today what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you, I'm going to show you two tests that you can perform on yourself with the help of my, well, my assistant, Anna. So, Carlos, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the first one. And we've been through this before. But again, this is a self-test. This is more sen sensitive than MRI, more sensitive than an X-ray. 
more sensitive than this new device uh, incurring using light energy and ultrasound to detect early arthritis. You're detecting it through a biomechanical deficiency and it's real easy to um, learn these tests. You've seen this before if you've seen our earlier videos. So Anna, what you're going to do is you're going to sit long ways over here. Now we already, we already gone through this before. As I said before, the knee extension is what tells you when arthritis is setting in. Now the way that you do this is very simple. You sit long ways like this. You put both hands underneath the back of your knee. And what you do is you push down. You push down. Now what you're, what you're trying to feel is the pressure that the knees, the back of the knees are applying on the palm of your hand as you're pushing down. Now a knee that's starting to become arthritic, you will not feel the same amount of pressure underneath or on that hand. So for example, let's say that Anna pushes down with both knees. Push down with both knees. If Anna detects less pressure on the palm of her right hand than she does on the left, that means that the tissues on this right knee are starting to become disorganized. She's starting to develop degenerative changes in the tissues. The, cha the tissues are starting to form a cross, they're starting to cross. Basically, some molecular scarring is starting to form inside the tissues themselves, preventing the normal gliding, rolling, and spinning of the joint itself. It's very sensitive. It's a 99% sensitivity with this. I have seen individuals who have had arthritis demonstrate normal knee extension, but it's rare. It's very rare. So by doing this maneuver right over here yourself at home, pushing down and feeling for pressure on the palm of your hand as you push down and trying to determine whether you feel more pressure on one than the other, the one that produces that you feel less pressure, that's the joint that's inflamed, that's the joint that's starting to develop degenerative tissue. So in essence, that test, this test will give you a very high sensitivity ratio of when the joint is starting to become disorganized. You can do this at home. This test is more sensitive than anything out there. Now, I'm going to show you a second test, a, th a second protocol or a maneuver that you can use. All you need is to be in front of a mirror. Now, Anna, what you're going to do is you're going to turn around like this and you're going to stand right over here. Now, we've been through this one before. We've shown this one in one of our past videos. Now, this is the test to detect whether you're starting to develop any type of arthritic changes or, or disorganization inside the joint tissue themselves. This is for the shoulder. All you need is to be in front of a mirror. Now what you do is you're in front of a mirror, you bend your knee, your elbow like this, and then you bring your arm up like this. Now you can see what's happening here. No, like You see what's happening here. Basically nothing. She's just raising up here. Everything is smooth, everything is mo moving independent to the other structures, nothing is happening here. Now, what I'm going to show you is what it will look like when you're starting to develop degenerative changes inside the joint itself. This is how it will look like when you do this maneuver right here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm doing just a simulation of what an arthritic shoulder would look like in front of the mirror as you're doing this maneuver. Now observe what happens here. Now basically this position locks in this humeral head. So it doesn't allow any rotation, spinning or gliding to occur, which is what would happen when you start developing biomechanical flaws secondary to disorganized or degenerative tissue. Now observe what happens here. And keep your head straight like this. Observe what happens here. Don't move. You see how this raises up? What's happening is there's no dissociation between the humeral head, the shoulder, the head of the shoulder, the bone right over here. This is the head of the humeral head right over here. You can see it right over here. There's no dissociation here. And the, 
the scapula, which is a bone that exists right in the back over here. The whole area is moving as one unit. There's no dissociation. You see how this rises up? If you were to get this, this, this motion right here, if you were to be getting, if you would get this, when you are doing this maneuver right here, that means that you're developing degenerative changes inside the shoulder. It's time to start thinking about doing something. So this is the, this is the abnormal motion right here. You can see, you see how this rises. See how it rises? If she were to get this, if you were to get this particular motion profile, see how it rises? This is how a, a degenerative shoulder will look like when you do this right here. Anna's shoulder is healthy, so obviously you can see that it, there's, it doesn't move. The shoulder is dissociating from the, from the scapula, but if she were to have degenerative sh changes inside the shoulder or the tissues are starting to become disorganized, the proteins are starting to unfold and become disorganized, she will start seeing this, this pattern. This pattern will develop and it start to be, it's, it's time to start getting concerned because you're developing degenerative changes in the shoulder. Now, you can do an MRI, you can do an X-ray, you can use this finger scanner on a joint that has this particular pattern and the test will come back negative. The, the biomechanical test is more sensitive than anything else because it's multi-dimensional versus the X-ray MRI or, or this finger scanner device. Those are not multi-dimensional. They're looking at the world through just one means of energy absorb absorption. And that's why these diagnostics tests, when it comes to detecting early di uh, arthritic changes, it's not very sensitive. There's going to be many false negatives. Okay, Anna, you can sit over here now. So, basically, that was the, that's, the, um, that's the talking point for today. I just wanted to make very clear that uh, if you're at home, you really don't need any $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 device to tell you when you're developing arthritic changes in your joint. It's not necessary. It's a, it's a biomechanical flaw that exists in the joint and it occurs very early in the degenerative process. It's, it's, it's a pattern that has developed, that I've seen, that I've observed, and it's, it's a pattern that's consistent patient after patient after patient. You have a 99% sensitivity rate with this. It's, 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 all, it's a given. It's very rare that you're going to have a, a joint that's developing arthritic changes and, the bio, and there will not be some kind of biomechanical flaw or arthrokinematic flaw in the joint itself. You just need to know how to, what motion you need to introduce in order for you to be able to observe the actual dysfunction itself. And you've just seen two. We've done videos on this before. So I just wanted to review it and just basically wanted to give a, a, an insight into ways that you yourself can detect it earlier than any kind of test that's out there. Now, we've been giving out a phone number that you can contact if you have any questions you can text me on this phone number if you're interested in any of the products that we've introduced all you have to do is just call the number text the number or email me on the number I think you can email me on the number even but it's probably best if you call or you just text the phone number is 786-354-1977 you'll see it on the videos from here on it will always appear on that video you're more than welcome you have any comment just Contact me through that phone. Now, for anybody that watches this video, I hope this video helps you out at home. If you have any questions, again, just give us a call. Till next time. Thank you.